Hi there, Love here. I am here. Today we're going to be making me uh, one of the oldest alcohols uh, ever made. We're going to start with a simple, simple way of doing it. Just honey, water, yeast. Right here is a Norwegian pewter drinking horn. Be hopefully putting this to good use later on. A mead drinking cup made out of horn, made by an Arizona craftsman. Right here, I am dissolving my honey and I make with a magnetic stirrer. You can do this with a hand stirrer. It's very important that all this equipment is sterilized. I use boiling water personally, a water cooker, like one of these right here. And that seems to work. Uh, let's also point out that honey is an antiseptic. So, uh, pretty hard for things to grow in honey. And right here, I have the, the warm water. You don't want it boiling. You don't want to burn the honey. You want to bring it up to about 50 Celsius. You know, or maybe like 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. For, uh, the non-metric is initiated. You're going to want about two pounds of honey per gallon of wort. Wort is the content that is in the jug that the alcohol is produced out of. A pound makes about 5%. So if you want something to strengthen the beer, you use one pound per gallon. If you, you, you want something that has the strength of wine, say 9.5 to maybe 13% on the high side, you're going to need two plus pounds with maybe some berries. I'm going to add my fruit on the second stage of this. I just want to get the honey started first. If you have a lemon, that would be great, or any lemon juice, because we're going to probably have to bring uh, up the acidity a little bit, because honey is more of like a base. And we're going to have to make it a little more acidic for the, the yeast. The yeast I'm using right now is distiller's yeast. Also recommend using wine yeast, the white wine right, wine yeast. It'll help uh, with the more nuanced flavors in the wine, but if you're just getting started, you can get a, this is like one kilo or t a little over two pounds of distiller's yeast for like 10, 15 dollars. This will hold you forever. This will probably go bad before you use all of it. Now, it's also important to note the honey that you might want to try to use because there's a lot of honey out there that isn't, it's been cut with syrups and other crazy stuff. It's actually a weird quagmire about the legal, how pure honey has to be before they can call it honey. And it's different in every country. Some countries it has to be like 50%. You want it as pure as possible because if you start getting syrup in it, it's going to make the mead more sour. Because a lot of certain types of sugars will give a different flavoring. I'm using so be uh, honey. I've never actually heard it enunciated, so it might be different. It's from North Dakota. I believe it's North Dakota. Yep, North Dakota. And this is the closest you can get to uh, Northern European or Norwegian ground honey. Normally they call it the hard honey. They use it almost like butter. It's about the same thickness as butter. Now this is a little more syrupy, but... You want something real thick. This stuff will never go bad. They find this stuff in tombs, buried underground, thousand plus years, they could still eat it. Wouldn't recommend that if you find it in the ground over a thousand years to eat it, but I'm just saying it's possible. Um, we have a funnel here, we have a wart jar, we have a, a scale to weigh it, which is very important. We're back again. Um, now I'm going to be pouring this portion of uh, dissolved honey into the wart jar. Now as you can see there's no hard sediment in it. Pretty much the, the honey has been uh, dissolved uniformly through the jar and uh, I just got to make sure I don't lose my magnet on the way down. I'm going to actually get a spoon. Not that one. Luckily, it attaches to anything metallic. Thankfully. I'm going to sterilize it real quick with uh, the hot water. Roll it through here, see if I can catch it. Come on, stay less. Hopefully. Yep, and there it is. Now we're going to pour. 
quart into the jar. I've already sterilized all this now, so it's want to be very clean with this. You don't want other microorganisms competing with the yeast, which is a fungus, to that's trying to produce alcohol. You don't want some of these some penicillin or some other weirdness going on here. Okay, as you can see, I gotta fill it up a lot more. You do have to remember to leave headroom in this because you do not leave headroom, you're going to have one hell of a mess. It's just gonna go everywhere. You know, through your yeast trap, it's gonna go up through everything. Let's go again. Um, finally, uh, dissolved all the honey. Um, this is a thermometer, a meat thermometer. You have to make sure that the wort isn't too hot. The wort is, as I said, the solution in the container here. That's going to be making all the alcohol for us. Uh, if it's over, I think it's 32 Celsius, it can kill the yeast. And if it kills the yeast, then you don't get any alcohol. No alcohol, which is terrible. Okay, I'm going to go put it in here. Put it right in the center. Yep. That looks good. Another way of testing it, if you don't have a thermometer, is the blood heat test. You want it to feel a little warm, but not like it's going to scald you. You don't want to get it too hot. It goes over 30 some odd Celsius. As I said, every yeast is different though. So look at your instructions on your yeast because some yeast is very temperamental. You gotta put it in a starter first. You know, you gotta do all this extra steps to it. I use distiller's yeast and distiller's yeast is very, very forgiving. I'm gonna go yeast here. Use this in a little while. Yeast does go bad after a while, though. So I'm just letting you know. I got a smaller scale right here. Make sure it's all good. It is. It can be very helpful to have a top for it, a normal top. Now you're also going to want to use a yeast trap, like right on this one right here, it's already been sterilized, the mouth of this has been sterilized, this isn't easily gone over, but this is a yeast trap. It stops air from getting into the container, because if the air gets into the container, it's going to turn this into vinegar. So it's going to turn completely sour and you're not going to want to drink it. It's going to be unbearable almost. It goes right there. Just using little bits of parts of the spoon, let's go ahead and some stick to it. It says one to three grams per gallon, but it's not super important. Usually they'll come in individual packets and you just add the packet. Most of the packets are good for like three to five gallons. It's be more than good enough for a one gallon wort. So you're gonna get some sticking in here. I'm just gonna rotate it. End over end. Don't need any stirring. Make sure it just gets mixed around a little bit. Time. 
Like beer, if it sits for a few weeks, it won't permeate that much air through the plastic. But the glass, it's pretty important that you, uh, you use a, a glass container. And this is probably pretty much what you're looking at for the first stage of it. Now, in about two weeks, we'll take it out, we'll siphon it. I have an auto siphon, so we'll go through that process. And I'll add fruit in the secondary stage. I usually add frozen, freeze-dried fruit because the cell membranes are already broken down and it makes it just a lot easier for the yeast to get into the sugars and eat it and produce more alcohol. So just let this sit in a relatively warm place, a bathroom, kitchen, wherever. Just has to maintain, you want about 70, 70 to 80 degree heat. If your house is already that heat, you know, that's great. You don't want it to get too warm though because it can kill the yeast. And it'll start fermenting and producing alcohol. Hi there. Just to finish up the video now, uh, the wort has been made. In the jug here, I use tap water. And I know a lot of people are gonna uh, do brewing, so you need to use distilled water or bottled water or whatever. You don't really need that in brewing. In brewing, especially mead, mead is a lot more forgiving on temperatures, on the way you dissolve it, the way you make it. As long as you have a good source of honey, the Honey, um, the mead was originally made with river and pond water. And you can think in the medieval era, the Viking era, era, they didn't have really refined water. Like nowadays, they're like fluoride in the water might affect it. I'm like, eh. the E. coli in pond water back in the day probably affected it more. So, but normal tap water, as long as you have clean tap water, maybe not lead or something crazy in it, you can use it. If you're concerned about your water, boil it first, then you can use it. Like al The way you make alcohol is a naturally cleaning way of making a solution that you can drink. Now that's the wort right there. So it has to sit for four weeks now to ferment. This is distiller's yeast, so it might go a little faster. We've added uh, two pounds of honey and one gallon of water. We've added distiller's yeast. And on the second stage, we'll be adding uh, fruit. I personally like to make uh, blueberry mead. Uh, you add about maybe a pound of blueberries. It'll make it go purple. It's not gonna have an intense blueberry flavor. Most meads don't have an intense flavor without them adding flavor to it. If you don't like to add hops to things, you don't have to add hops. Uh, it has real no real purpose in mead making. Some people like the flavor of hops. I personally do not really like the flavor of hops. I want to taste the honey. I want to taste the other notes in the alcohol. I want it to be very light and refreshing. I live in an area that gets up to 120 degrees, so that could be it. Thank you and hope to see you again.